It's not. Are we live? Hello, we hello. Hi. Okay, if it says we're on, we're on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you're all well. I'm going to wait a few minutes. My mama is back there. Say hi, mom. Mom. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> how are you? You can't Hi, see. How are you? you can't see. Nobody. You're gonna see the chat ob over here. Okay. My mom came over to help me uh, clean up. We're having a party here on Saturday, and so I roped her into making the makikulche, which are salty cookies, and she's making the shidochai, which is just milk tea. So the the I don't like salty cookies, right? Um, my kids think that they're like a prank. Like, oh, you give those to people. You're like, here, you want a cookie? But they're a real thing in Afghanistan. Um, and you're supposed to eat it with very, very sweet milk tea. So the sweetness and then the saltiness kind of gets canceled yeah, out. So good. mom is making the tea. We've made that on this channel before. Um, but she's making it really weak. She only put in two tea bags. And I was like, I put in late. seven. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't drink that much uh, tea at night. She likes it really weak. It's basically just colored water that she drinks. But we um, we know we're talking fairly quickly right now. We're gonna make tea and we're gonna wait for a few more people to come on. Um, we're gonna talk about the situation in Afghanistan. We're gonna talk about, a lot of people have a lot of questions about what they can do to help. Are there charities that, hi Sheila, thank you for coming. Are there charities you can donate to? And I want mom to give us a little bit of background too. Um, Right now on the ground in Afghanistan, uh, people are really up in arms. I don't know if people saw. Mom, was it Jalalabad or Nangahad when they were fighting over the flag? I think it was Jalalabad. Jalalabad. So they took down the flag of the Taliban and they, um, they w wanted to put back up our national flag, which you can usually see directly behind mom back there. Um, and they were shooting at people. And then today in Kabul, they also had uh, a demonstration with people um, uh, carrying the flag and saying we will not give up our flag. So I wanted mom to tell us a little bit about the history of our flag and what the colors mean. I'm wearing uh, green and black and you can see my earrings are red and green. Uh, the Afghan flag is red, green and black. It's actually Tor Sur Yeah. Yeah, so it's black red and green in that order and each of the colors of course um stands for something so in just a little while when we get a few more people on here we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about some immigration options i know people are very concerned um how to get people out of the country so we want to discuss that we want to make them a kikulche mom how is my chai going over there Boy. what do you need something else you need no. uh no. Safran. Okay. Well, oh, mom doesn't put saffron in her tea. Okay. Not in the milk tea. Okay. Not in milk tea. Okay. I put saffron in my milk tea. I do. I do. You guys know I do. Somebody made a comment the other day about my tea, and they were like, we hate to tell you, but what you made was not shir chai. You made khemak chai? No. Khemak is something completely different. I didn't make khemak. This one they call kemak chai. What, just milk tea? Yeah, we call, we call it um, dut mix. Petit, mix, yeah. Mix. No, dut petit is Pakistan and India. Yeah. We call it mix. Minty and shir chai is shir chai, yeah. shir chai and you, and you uh, do it with baking uh, soda yeah. and it's a whole thing. But and then you put the kemak. And kemak. But for shortcut, we call it shir chai. We call anything that's mix these days, we just call it shir chai even though it's not. Remember how I told you the other day I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about tea, right? But um, we have all of our ingredients here for uh, namakikulche. I have talked with you guys before about the word namak. And namak means salt. And But namak means more than salt, right? Namak, salt, we know uh, when we talk about food and cooking and um, there's a, a book, oh my gosh, I just had a brain fart, the author who wrote Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. So salt is what we use to bring out both uh, sweet, to bring out all flavors, right? And we say that someone has namak, right? They have salt when they're pretty. So maybe like 
they're not like some sort of whatever your traditional cultural definition of beauty is, but they have that something that makes them uh, beautiful so or attractive. So we say they have namak. And so salt is essential. Um, Justin was saying, well, maybe you can throw your own spin on these cookies because um, I got this recipe from Mazar Cuisine. They're a hugely popular YouTube channel. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for bringing Afghan cuisine to the forefront, really making it very popular. I'll link to them down below also. And um, if I were going to make my own twist on these cookies, I would add more sugar to them. So we're going to stay true to the recipe and not add sugar. Mama, what you doing? I'm slow the heat. You turn down the heat on the tea yeah, yeah. so it can just... Mom, have you ever made namaki kulche before? Never. I'm not a good baker. Well, Mom loves to say she's not a good cook. Cook I, I will do, you know. But baking? You used easy. to make an awesome cake from a box mix. <laughs> That's what I can do very well. <laughs> <laughs> but you've never made, you never even make regular kulche, roach no, or never, anything, never, right? Never, never, no. Yeah, how come? Mom, I feel deprived. No, because everybody else was making it. <laughs> you didn't have to make it. I had them in the house. <laughs> Hi, Vida. There's my cousin Vida is, is watching too. Thank you so much. There's Mama. Salami there, John. Okay. Um, so we're going to get started um, and hopefully people will join. If you have any questions about Afghanistan as we go through, I'm going to try to talk a little bit about um, what the situation is on the ground. I don't know if most of you know I'm also an immigration attorney. It's not something I do all that often since my criminal defense work takes up the majority of my time, but I've been trying to work closely with a bunch of other uh, really amazing immigration. Uh, at, my mom is a great cook. She really is. <laughs> a really, a really great immigration advocate. Um, so, but we're going to start here with an empty bowl. And we're going to start by taking some room temperature butter. Here I have, um, it's about three quarters of a cup of no, it's more than that. This is a full cup and a half of butter, but we're only going to take two of these or one and a half and we're going to put it into this bowl. They should be softer than this, so we may have some issues stirring it. Mom? Yeah. We're going to have issues stirring this. You want to put in the hot water? I just did. Should we put it in the microwave maybe? Yeah. Okay. This is three quarters of a cup. Um, now, see, remember I tell you guys when I do this stuff live, it's not as pretty as when I do it in a in video. So I'm going to put this in the microwave just for a few seconds so it'll soften. And um, here I have just a tablespoon of yogurt. Where's my cup of eggs? Oh, here. And I didn't have my eggs out at room temperature either, so they're right here. I'm going to separate this egg because I only need the yolk. And this is just to put on top of the, the cookie or whatever it's called. You know, honestly, if they just called it a biscuit, I think it would be fine. But when you say cookie, you have a certain expectation. Thank you, my mama does look fantastic. Say mashallah. Um, if we called it a biscuit, I think we wouldn't have the same expectations of it as we do when we call it a cookie. Mom, can you tell us what the colors of the flag stand for? As I remember, it was a period of time when they had the war. In Afghanistan, the black. Black means it was like a dark. And the red one is when there was a lot of blood, you know, people Bloodshed. were dying. People Bloodshed. are dying, yeah. right? And the green one when they defeat the, I believe it was the British. Yes. They defeat the British. So my father used to tell me the story, you know, how they, they were running on the street, whatever they had in their store to run after 
to fight them. to fight the British, right? Yeah. So my grandfather, your father, yeah, went and fought. Yeah, I think that's so. his story. That's his story. <laughs> that's his story that he went, that he went and he fought no, the he, British. They were running in the street. So they are coming. The British is coming. The British is coming. <laughs> Yeah, the British, the British are coming, just like the Americans said, too. Yeah, one time, you know, right after Donald Trump won the election, one of these guys who had a British accent said to me, oh, you're going to get sent back. And they told him, I said, my people defeated you three times. Twice there and once here. If anyone's going back, it's you. What kind of yogurt do I use? Hi, Shri. Um, I'm just using nonfat Greek yogurt. You can use whatever you want. Mom, I was going to make schlumber mm -hmm. on the channel at one point. What kind of yogurt would I use to make schlumber? We use a 2%. Just 2%, but, but, but not Greek yogurt, right? No, no. You want to use like Danon, just like a regular? No, no, we, we, because we make our own yogurt. Well, of course, yogurt. she makes her own yogurt. Yeah, we She make makes her, her own yogurt. <laughs> Your father does. My dad, yeah, my dad, <laughs> my dad is the yogurt maker in the house now. Okay, this is three quarters of a cup of butter. It's a little melted. Please remember, take out your butter earlier. So... Was Afghanistan under British rule, or were they trying to take over? They were trying. They hung out for a little while, didn't they? No, they came so. through, but they so. didn't. They didn't last too long, right? No. It's a half a cup of oil, um, and you can use any sort of unflavored oil that you want. Okay. Um, so the British did try to take over twice. We have a story, right? We said that they killed everyone when they were retreating, right? They were running back through the mountains to leave Afghanistan, and they left, Walaikum Salam. They left one man alive, and they told him, go back and tell them what we did to you. So this idea that the Afghans are afraid to fight, right? Mm -hmm. Like now when they're saying like, oh, after the Americans left, the Afghan army was too weak and too afraid to fight. Like that doesn't sound like Again. No, I think it's, it's more than that. Yeah. I, I don't know much about it, but I heard that they were not allowed to fight. Uh, no, they were not giving enough food or anything, and they, they didn't want to fight. Well, they knew that they had to surrender, right? Yeah, I think they didn't want to fight either. They were done. They were done. Enough fighting, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm just stirring up the yogurt, I mean the the butter and the oil together and making it smooth. So a lot of people are asking about, um, you know, we get phone calls all the time. Uh, I get texts, people are asking about who to donate to, what can they do, how do you get people out of the country? And, you know, it's hard to know right now who to give money to. We have a charity group within the family and we are able to get money to people directly on the ground. Because we're just a group of women that gather yeah. money and we give it to women who need it in Afghanistan. Um, no, we do, you know, women's needs to fix their house, their other things, buy food. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of time women's finances are in control of their husbands. Mm -hmm. um, and so they don't always have money for themselves. Um, we have also given money during Eid. Mm -hmm. Right, Akhtar for just basic necessities. And I imagine right now women are going to need basic necessities like food, you know, bread, yes, oil, yes. cooking oil, rice, basics. I mean, forget about meat. They're going to need basics. So I tried to start a launch good today. And um, it's a, a launch good, if you don't know, is uh, like GoFundMe, but it's a Muslim based. Uh, platform and they told me I was not going to be allowed to do it without partnering with a charity just because of compliance issues um, yes so I'm getting to that Sheila thank you for asking that question about whether there's a way to don't get money directly to us um, I'm going to uh, be posting our, our PayPal um, in the description when this goes up on the site so that you can donate directly to to us um, and then we can get the money directly to people in Afghanistan because right now there is no money in the banks in Afghanistan there's banks no banks are closed banks are closed and there's no money because Americans have stopped sending US dollars to Afghanistan because the terrorists run it now the terrorists that they gave the country to they run it so they've stopped sending uh, getting money there so we're still trying to work out I asked uh, Amagwala today how are they getting money and they said Abdul Basit yeah, got his cousin, money yeah. 
Um, but they're still waiting for somebody else. They were asking to see if they picked it up because Western Union has also suspended uh, all money transfers in Afghanistan. So a lot of the money right now is going to the refugee camps on the border, um, which is fine, but there are many, many people who are not in refugee camps who are in the... Look, here's my problem, okay? Refugees are great. If you need to get out of the country, get out. But the people that are staying and want to stay, they also need support. And if you want to help the people who are in Afghanistan, who are going to stay and fight for a better Afghanistan to keep eyes on the Taliban, we have to help the women and girls and the people who are in the towns, in the cities, who cannot get to Kabul, cannot get to a border, cannot get to a refugee camp. So they need money because if they have food, if they have shelter, if they have clothing, they have the will to fight for another day, right? If they don't have food, they're going to give up. So I will post a link. There are a couple of really great charities that you can give to. Um, uh, Islamic Relief has a, an emergency fund for Afghanistan right now. They're really good. And the Z Zakat Foundation also has an emergency relief fund for Afghanistan. I would give to those two if you don't give to the, the, the PayPal that I will link here in just a day or so. So, you know, but my, my khalas, um, my ammas, they are, they're always giving to the people in Afghanistan. And we always say charity begins at home, you know. Your can, amma was the one to start. Yeah, my amma is a sister on your aunt on your father's side. So I have khalas, which are, and you know, I know khalas is a very popular term these days. Like people are always talking about khalas. Uh, those are your mother's sisters. So, but we all, because my parents are first cousins, right? We have a family bush, not a family tree. Um, they're all very involved with each other. And they grew up as best friends and too. Best friends, sisters. Yeah, they, they grew up like sisters. Others. They have our own chat sisters. Yeah, so they, they have their own group and they're very close. And we're lucky that we get to see this amazing group of women that really does um, walk the walk. They don't just talk about things, they actually go forward and they do things, they do what they can. So I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy to have you guys. I love you. Okay, so now we have the butter and the oil. We're gonna, this is gonna take forever for us to do that. Yeah. To do this, mom, can you pass the egg? Okay. Okay, we're gonna break the egg in there. You want me to do it? Yes. Mom wasn't even going to be on camera. I made her be on camera. She's camera shy. Okay. Now, I'm looking down at the, at the recipe from Mazar Cuisine. Like I said, I'm not going to take credit for this. This is all them, okay? Because this is not something I would make, okay? Cherie, you had asked about can you make this gluten-free? Absolutely. Uh, we use a lot of um, uh, we, corn flour. If you want to use a corn flour, make it from corn. If you want to make it from rice, any gluten-free... there. <laughs> gluten-free <laughs> flour that you want to use you can use for this we actually have a lot of kulchia that are made yeah, from yeah from not from white flour um yeah birinji birinji was made from it's rice made from rice um and corn and yeah we have we have corn uh we have um what's made from corn the round is made oh, from corn. Roach. Roach. Yeah. roach is made from corn it's a very popular dish um it can be made from corn and flour. Yeah. So we have a lot of gluten-free options. And we have a lot of vegan options. Um, usually our cookies are not made with butter. Butter is not a huge mm -mm. Uh, uh, ingredient in Afghan no. cooking. We don't use it a lot. We use oil. It's a, it is usually yeah. used. Yeah. So most of our dishes, unless they have meat in them, are also vegan. Yeah because we don't use uh, butter. You, if you wanna add uh, yogurt to something on the top, now you can use a plant-based yogurt too, if you want to, but otherwise we don't have, there's meat and there's vegetables. <laughs> and they're very separate things, you know? Although these days they put meat in everything. They put meat in the spinach. Yeah, because when I ordered the food, I said no. No, meat. don't put meat, because my dad does not eat any land yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. It's get too much. Yeah, it's too much meat. Okay, we need two teaspoons of baking po baking powder. Our Afghanistan sweet 
uh, Afghanistan dessert sweet. They're not really that sweet, huh? No. Are they? Are, are we, what kind of desserts do we have? We don't. We have uh, firini. Firini. We have baklava. We have maleta. We have. Nothing is too kulche. sweet. Uh, I'm cooking in namaki kulche. Salt cookies. Yeah. Maraba is just jelly, though. Yeah. No, they make it with the different kind of. Oh, you know what we have to make, mom? The fudge. Um. Uh, what is that word? The the fudge that we have. Guys, are there Afghans out there? What, what's the... You know, the, the square, we cut it into squares, it's made with milk. You, um, oh, um... I mean, not that you ever made it, so you no, probably don't no. even know what it's called. Chachi makes it. Yeah, Chachi right. makes it. Chachi uh, makes it. My uncle's wife makes it. Panit. No, not panit. Panit is, uh, cheese. It's share something. No, okay, well, it'll come to me. Burfi, it's almost like burfi, yes. Almost like burfi. Yeah. Yes, almost like burfi. Um, celiac, and I hate to miss out on good things. No, we have a lot of things that don't require any flour at all, other than our bread. Right? Mm -hmm. Our bread, you have to have white flour. They add, they put wheat flour in it now, too, but it's not the same. Shirpeya, that's it. You got it, Vida. Shirpeya. That's what it is. <laughs> See, I knew it was share something. Share something. I knew it was something. Shirpeya. Okay. Now comes the only sugar that's in here, which is two teaspoons, two sad little teaspoons of sugar. Just two. <laughs> I'm going to make two sad little, not a half a cup. Of brown sugar and a half a cup of, of white sugar, but two teaspoons. Okay, so people are asking how to get people out of Afghanistan. Mom, you have heard from on the people on the ground in Afghanistan too, but for the most part, you're hearing that it's quiet, right? Yeah, it's quiet. I speak to a lot of Kandahar. Yeah, in Kandahar, it's fairly quiet. In um, Kabul, the, the, our cousins say it's quiet. Yeah, the girls' schools are not the, open. Though. Nothing is open. Nothing is open. Nothing is open. The so, girls are very sad. Yeah, the girls are sad. But the the quietness is something that we're, we we can live with. I mean, everybody, yeah. of course, does not trust the Taliban, um, but of course, we don't trust the Americans anymore either. Mom is very diplomatic. She's always been a <laughs> diplomat. I'm going to tell you, I don't trust anybody. But tomorrow at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We are having a Facebook Live. I think it's also going to be on YouTube. I will put the link on this as well um, about immigration options. We have a, a great panel of people. I'm just moderating. Um, okay, now we have salt, namak, okay? And it's only one teaspoon of salt. Now, the way this gets salty is that because there's so little sugar, it becomes a, a, a salty cookie, right? There's not a lot of salt, but it is a salty cookie because of this. Okay, and then we have some white vinegar, half a tablespoon. We add that to this. Oh, mom, hell. Hell? Hell, I have to get the hell. What is hell, mom? Huh? What is it, hell in English? The hell, the um, cardamom? You gotta go look that way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> cardamom. Hell is cardamom. Mm -hmm. I spent so much of my life I'm sure that other Afghans. What's the vinegar do? I think the vinegar activates the um, the uh, baking powder. Um, is that's science? So I'm happy it's quiet there too. But I would be happier if they were actually uh, if they felt secure, yeah, right? They're not secure. They're not. They don't feel mm -hmm. secure. So mm -hmm. even though it's quiet, they don't feel safe. Yeah. So okay, mom, we're gonna mix this. Mm -hmm. And then we have to add the uh, flour. Okay, I think one cup at a time. Okay, so it's three cups of flour. So it's fluffy. Yeah, it's a fluffy cookie. Yeah. I, I think that you make biscuits. Biscuits are made very similarly to this, right? Go Mom. ahead. Yep, let's add one. She's the teacher. I'm not the <laughs> What's funny, Mama, is that everyone is so surprised that I can cook. You know, when they watch my channel, they're like, what? You know how to cook? It's like, who did I think was feeding me since I was 19 years old? McDonald's? 
I must. <laughs> Which color right. cardamom? Oh, you can use you can use black or green cardamom or white, but uh, we use green for sweet things, and we use black for savory things. Now, do not add green cardamom to things that are savory. It will not taste good. So it's like it's like a. It's like type O negative blood, like universal donor, but you can only get one on the other side. Now we have to knead this with our hands, Mom. Okay. I think it's going to need some more flour. Is that all we have in there? Mm hmm. We've got to add more. Go yeah, this is not enough. Can we lift it up and dump the whole thing in? There. So uh, there's a few things that are, are happening right now um, as far as immigration. We're hearing that if you can get, if you have a, a case that's in process, um, if you have a case that's in process, if you know somebody who worked for uh, the government, they started their SIV, they worked for a, uh, an American journalist. You can see how this, this is right now, right? It's like, um, it's like nice and, and sticky. Like the way it feels is very soft. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to come together into a, into a ball. But we're hearing that if you can make your way to the airport, okay, if you make your way, if you can actually get into the airport, they're processing people with pending cases at the airport. I can't tell you if this is 100% true or not. It's, it's what we're hearing. Um, the hard part, of course, is getting into the airport. Uh, my cousin, that goes on top when we put it on the oh. tray. And then we put the, uh, um, the black seeds mm -hmm. and the sesame seeds. So if you can get to the airport and you have a case that's in process, the other thing is call all of your representatives, okay? Call them. If you know of somebody who needs help, they are supposed to help you. That's their job. Their job is to try to assist you. There's a lot of stuff going out there about DOD, Department of Defense, and Department of State. They also have various programs. They have uh, P1 programs, which are for the SIVs, uh, and P2 programs for people that did work with... Um, other American agencies. The other thing you can try to do is humanitarian parole. It's um, form I-131. And basically what that does is just get someone a travel document, gets them out of the country. I know that there are some agencies that will charge you $150,000 to sneak people out of the country. Um, but tomorrow we will have, I think it needs a little more flour, Mom, don't you? Do we have any more in there? Just a little bit. Okay. The egg yolk and the yogurt is in here. Yeah, you might have missed that. That's just in here. That, that's going to get brushed on top of the cookie when we, right before we put it into the oven so that the seeds will stick to Mom, are you breaking my stuff? <laughs> So I don't know if you all have seen my Facebook page, Mom. Um, there's Malali of my wand. My wand? What? You know her story? No. You don't know her story? How she went in the battle of my wand against the British and she carried the flag? Oh, okay. Yeah? Yeah. And she wrote a poem. It said something like, uh, like, my love, if you have not like left your heart on the battle of my wand, are you even alive? Or something like that. You know the story? You don't? No. You never heard of Malali of my one? I, I, I heard Malali. Did you did you learn about her in school? No, I don't think so. What did you guys learn about in school? Just people will say. <laughs> people will say. Yeah. People will say Planky like a Malali. Malala. Malala. She said that people would say, oh, that person is like Malala. So is that a good if you thing? Were, you were a brave. If you were brave. You know, a brave. 
I have a, my cousin's uh, daughter is named uh, Malala. Yeah, Malala, right? Um, mm -hmm. The Umar Khor. You're, you better say you know what it is because Vida's on here. <laughs> She's gonna tell you. Oh, uh, her name is Malali. No, it's not Malali. Malala. Yeah. Umar's daughter, isn't it? Yeah, what's the, her the, the baby name? one? No. Oh, the, the older one is uh, Mal uh, Malia. 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 Oh my gosh. I. Now, now you say it. No, I said it. <laughs> I got so confused. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? No. Malia. What is Malia? I don't know. <laughs> I expect my mom to know everything about everything that has anything to do with Afghanistan. No. Poor lady, I'm always asking her these questions. You know, there's this great cookbook. Oh, hang on, I'm going to I'm gonna give it to you. Mom, here. It's, it's already oiled. It's, it, it doesn't need oil. How do you do it? Hang. Well, the way I saw it done on the... is that she just... she rolled it out and then she used the cookie cutter. Oh, you know? She put everything here? Yeah, and then she used a cookie cutter. I don't know that I have a cookie cutter that's the right size. This size is good, right? Yeah. Here, yeah, she rolled it. I'm gonna show you this amazing cookbook. Hold on one second. She put me alone with the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I have no clue what to do with it. You're doing great, Mom. Huh? Okay, this book here is written by a British woman who, Malia, yeah, no, we got it. Thanks, Beatty. Um, by a British woman who was married to an Afghan guy and lived in Kabul for a very long time. And it has a bunch of recipes in it, and I remember going through it and being like, Mom, uh, how come you never made me this? And how come you never made me that? Let's see what we got in here that Mom has never made. Lawasha? Never heard of that. Never made it. She never made chapatis. She never made rote. <laughs> I'm making cookies. <laughs> you did make tartari shorwa though. Never yeah. made china ke. No, china ke. I don't know. Birinj, <laughs> shorwa birinj. Just rice. I, I, I never had china ke. What? What do you mean you never mm -hmm. had china ke? So there's this really great uh, TV show that you can watch uh, called, uh, uh, on, it's on Tolo TV, right? And um, there's like a bunch of really great cooking, like uh, food uh, around Afghanistan. And they take you to a place that they make uh, China Kye. And it, what they do is they make the um, uh, stew, this lamb stew, and they make it in teapots. It's a very old, old, old tradition. And they just, that's all they make, this re these restaurants. They only make China Kye in teapots. I heard about it. But Who is going to give cash right to the people? I don't know. I didn't. I'm sorry. I missed the question above that. If you could let me know what that question is. Um, the, I don't think that there's any cash going directly to people right now, unfortunately, because there is no cash in the banks. So the, uh, the, the minister of finance or, or the, in Afghanistan has had a series of tweet threads that's talking about the economic situation in Afghanistan right now. And they had canceled, they had, you know, ordered money and they had, uh, the, the order was canceled. The Americans said, we're not sending them any more U.S. dollars. So there are, are, there are no U.S. dollars, uh, my understanding is, to be had in Afghanistan. You can get it through the border. Somebody can hand over money. There may be um, the halawas, right, the places that money exchangers yeah. that may have money. Yeah. Um, but there's no real way right now that we know of to get money, which is what I'm, I'm a little bit concerned with all of these charities that are raising hundreds of thousands of dollars. Who are they giving the money to? You know? That's what I want to know, is who are they giving the money to? 
Is it going to the people? I think in the refugee camps, probably. Mm, probably. You know? Because they're easy to get to because they're on the borders. As long as they don't go to Pakistan. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's the real situation, right? Mm -hmm. As long as they don't go to Pakistan. But we're, we're not ready for that conversation. You want to make these two? Yeah, we'll do this first. Let's put these in first. Oh, they're breaking apart when you lift them up. Don't lift them up. <laughs> there's, the, there's the answer. We don't have to lift them up. But the, the, the I, like I said, I will have a link to, I wonder if we should just give a link to um, Amagola's Venmo. I know because people keep asking me who to give money to. As long as it goes to the trustworthy people, but you know. But who do we trust? How do you know who is trustworthy right We do trust you or Amma. Right, so Amma. I can give, um, we can give a... Because she does have a, a good link to her nephew. And yeah, so she has people directly on the ground there who are able to get money. So maybe we can just link to that. Justin? I'm, I'm trying the best place to get that direct link. Um, can we put it right here in the chat? Do you have, do you have it saved? Yeah, I have it on my phone. Hold, please. I'm going to give you the link. If you'll hand me the phone, I'll put it on the, in the chat. Mm. I'm such a good baker. I cannot pick up the cookies from the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Where's her Venmo? Hold, please. Is uh, Vijay's sister is watching? I don't think so. I'm looking for it. Okay, I'm gonna get that to you, okay? I'm instead of just looking down, which is really awkward when my mother tries to remove these cookies that are breaking just apart. Just try, just try my cookies. <laughs> I'm telling you, these lives are tough, man. These lives are tough. If we just didn't do it live, it, you would think that we were just the queens of Namikikulche. Let's just put these in first, see how they taste. Yeah. Let's not make any more yet. Yeah. What if they taste like Namikikulche? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm sure. If they taste like the mukikulche, they will be sad. <laughs> okay, now we have to brush the uh, the top with the yogurt. I think this will make. It looks like it makes about two dozen cookies. Maybe more. If you want these cookies, I just keep looking down. Do the cookies rise? I don't know, Sheila. They should rise a little bit. I hope they rise. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Mom, I need to get in here so I can get the the brush. But I'm going to get you my my Amaz. Um, why can I not find anything today? Because I was not very well prepared, huh? No. Oh, you're busy. I'm busy. There's many things. Where's our brush? It should not be in there. It should be right in here. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. Let me, I'm going to look for her um, Venmo in just one second. Let me see. Is it Venmo or is it Cash App? It's Venmo. I sent her. Oh, phone. wait. Yeah, we could just look up. Hang on. Let me just look up her Venmo right here. Hang on. I can find it. Hold on. Venmo. Oh, here. Oh, my friend Shannon sent her money. To Masura? Yeah, to Masura. Okay, it's right here. I got it. It's at. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the chat. Hold on, I got you. I got you. Okay, here's where you can send money. Okay. 
Oh wait, that's not how you should do it. You should do it like this. What the heck is happening? That. You did it? Yeah, I did it. So that's, Mom, you wanna put these? You wanna, you gotta put the, can you guys see what these look like right now? So my Amma can get money. I have a friend from elementary school, uh, my friend Shannon, who, here you want to put the, the, we have sesame seeds here, and we have nigella seeds here. And then we sprinkle those. If you have any dish in the world, any cookie, any cake, bread, and you want to call them Afghan, all you have to do is you put some sesame seeds and some nigella seeds, some black seeds on it, it's Afghan. Okay? That's it. That's all you have to do. I'm telling you, you put these black seeds on, you can say, look what I made. I made, <laughs> I made this, this Afghan jello. It doesn't matter what it is. But, um, so there's the, um, the, my, my, um, my aunt's Venmo. They, you know, they send money pretty frequently. We know people on the ground. You can trust her. She, uh, no, not poppy seeds. No, uh, nigella seeds. They're also called barakat seeds. But no, are they poppy seeds? They're not poppy seeds. Who is the baker? <laughs> Who is the Afghan? I am the Afghan. Oh, I, you see how she said I was not Afghan? I am an Afghan, but not, not, not I don't make cookies or anything. That's this time. No, that's Venmo. It's not PayPal. It's Venmo. It will. It's direct. Uh, uh, direct transfer. Um, we don't. I don't have her PayPal. She normally gets the money. We sent it to her through Venmo, and then from Venmo, uh, she sends it to Afghanistan. And we know who she sends it to because normally the group gets together and they're, she's always asking, she's so sweet. She's like, who should we give it to? And then she gives us a list of people um, like, oh, this person needs it. And we always say, whoever you think. She, she's very good. Huh? She's very good. She'll, yeah, she'll say, she, you know. She knows people, you know, who needs what. And again, you're not necessarily helping refugees, okay? You're not helping evacuees. You are going to be helping women in Afghanistan who have needs, right? Whether they don't have a working running water or a proper uh, bathroom or clothes. Sometimes it's as simple as their uh, daughter is getting married and they don't have the money that's necessary to properly get her to her husband's house. Uh, whether we agree with these things or not, you know, these are this is the way that it's done. And if the, the girl can't go to her husband's house because of money, she's trapped. She's uh, usually just, it's very hard because money is so tight already. Or the son can't bring his bride because he doesn't have what he needs in the house. And most of the time it's just very basic things. Clothing, food, uh, <laughs> I don't think we'll be giving any monies for parties right now. That was a thing for a while. Like somebody wants to throw a party because so-and-so got engaged and they don't have the money for it. Um, and those were in the good times, right? We could give people money for, for parties. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about Afghans. Do they have access to food? They have access, yes, the stores are open. The stores are, in fact, open. There's a great... Uh, a couple of YouTube channels. One of them is called Afghanistan HD and the other one is called Afghan Mirror and they will actually show you daily what is open and what is happening around Afghanistan. You can also go to the YouTube channel for Tolo News and Tolo is the official news station of Afghanistan and they are still reporting. I don't speak Farsi so I can't really tell what's happening a lot of the time. What they're saying they have I think two female reporters who speak Pashto, so I, I watch them. 
Um, and my understanding is is that the the stores are I mean it's it's closed but it's open so there is we just don't know how long it's gonna last right because if the borders are closed and people are not feeling comfortable to go and to their food production because Afghanistan grows a lot of its own food in country as well um, but mom what about the Bahona in Kandahar yeah Bahona, the, the, uh, your cousin sent the video they are watering the first time the, the, the gardens yeah they didn't go for a couple of months maybe more I don't so, so we have orchards in Afghanistan and now there's water right so the irrigation canals are filled with water and they have been shut down for months so they were very dry but there's also the processing of all of this all of this food I'm going to put these in the oven now I had the oven set for 350 degrees and again we're going to have the recipe on here so even though we're just chatting we will we, this will be online and you'll be able to get the recipe as well it goes in for about 30 minutes which seems like a long time for cookies so let's see what happens Oh, then you can use, um, we use almond milk too. Oh, okay. Oh, we're almost out of that too. Mom says we don't have milk. We run out of milk a lot. So, um, I I'm not sure for how long this food situation will last, especially if they can't get any food across the borders. Um, but Afghanistan is a, a fairly self-sufficient country. Um, you know, we have, uh, Animals, people raise, you know, cows and sheep and uh, goats, chickens. Um, we grow rice and wheat. So um, there's a lot of things that are, are, are in country. It's just, are people going to be able to get to their factories and their processing plants? Um, Mom said that the Taliban came by and said, go to work. Right? Yeah, they, they told the... the uh, they, they are saying in the TV and uh, come to work, the people that works for the government should be back and all of them. And the school is not open. Schools are not the, open. The late, particularly the girls. I think madrasa schools are open. I mean, of course the madrasas are open. Yeah. Madrasa is a religious school. But that, that's, that's a school they teach now, the, like the regular school. But they madrasa? are more, more strict religiously. So just like a religious school, like yeah. like a Catholic school or some yes, other school, yes. right? So okay. madrasas had been known for a long time during the Taliban time. They're the they're the where the Taliban learned to become so. Yeah, madrasa was always there, but not that 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 very well, right? That, that extreme. Not, and not that extreme and not that well known. People no. weren't sending their children regularly no, to no. madrasa. They would send it to the masjid. Right. So learn. you go to school. Yeah. And then you go to masjid. The masjid to learn. Yeah. To learn how to and we pray or... School. Yeah, the school. They have you know, a religious class. Oh, I think I left the fridge door open. You can see it back there. My fridge is, my fridge is yelling at me. Like your father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like my dad, she said. So, okay. Let's talk a little bit about evacuees. All right. I have the, the my aunt's... Venmo listed, you can trust her, you can trust us, we will get the money to the people who need it in Afghanistan. Now, um, people are asking how do I get so and so, such and such out of the country. The most important thing is to get information from those people, okay? You need names, you need to know where they worked, who they worked for, how long they worked there, and then what you need to do is get in contact with those agencies because for these programs, the agencies themselves need to make a referral. You cannot apply yourself for a P2, for some sort of visa, like, oh, I worked for the Americans, I need to get out. No, that American company has to send a referral, right? And so that's the part where we can help. So if someone says to you, I worked as a fixer for newspapers, for example, um, Yes, that's who it is. It's uh, Degdan and something, but she is, uh, she's fantastic, and I hope she's safe. Um, she's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hostess, and really uh, snarky, and she has a lot of spunk. She's really great. Um, she's my favorite. But you need the information, yes, called Afghan Street Food. There's two. There's one with a, 
a guy and there's one with her. Um, one is Afghan street food and the other one is, I, I wish I could remember the name of it. Yes, but I think Dig Dan Dig Dan Watanur Tanur, okay. And we can maybe, um, Justin can just put a link to it. Mm -hmm. Dig Dan, he's looking at me like he doesn't even know that we're having this live I, right I, now. No, I, I, Alexa, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. So it's a great show, and I think that, um, you know, she really shows a side of Afghanistan that people don't generally get to see, you know, um, and a lot of things that they have there that we don't have here in America, like you go and you sit by the river, and they go and they catch your fish for you, and then they bring it in and they deep fry it for you, and then they bring you tea, and you drink your tea, and you wait for your fresh fish to be fried. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I never had that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's in Kabul. Yeah. In Kabul. Yeah, in Kabul. In, maybe in Jalalabad in those area. But, um, so the thing that we can do is if we have information from people in Afghanistan, we can get that information and maybe contact the organizations in, Amer in America or the American organizations and say, hey, do you remember this person? I mean, I contacted someone today and they were like, yeah, we remember him. Um, you know, we had hired him, so and gave me the information of the person to contact, who is taking care of these P two issues. So, um, if you do know of someone and you want to help, that's one way to help. I know that uh, there are refugees coming into America right now, and that people are being so incredibly generous with their donations and welcoming them. I, I'm sure that that's incredibly helpful. If you can reach out to your local organizations, I know, for example, in Maryland. Uh, Hogan said that he was taking like 200 refugees. I mean, okay, Maryland, you can do better than that. There's a whole lot of empty land there. I know that uh, Virginia just got 2,500 at, at an Air Force base, and we're expecting several thousand more here. I know that Utah had issued a statement saying, you can come to Utah. And you know, Mom, I think that Afghans would love to go to Utah because it has the mountains. And also you can marry more than one wife. <laughs> She's not listening to me. <laughs> Did you hear me? More than one wife. Yeah, I said people can go to Utah because there's mountains and you can marry more than one wife. That's for the men. Yeah, well, of course, why do women are not going <laughs> to marry more than one wife. We, although we could use more wives. Too. I will never let my my husband or my kids to go there. <laughs> That's not no. No, what did Dad say when he went to uh, Afghanistan when we talk about how somebody else, oh, we heard so-and-so got a second wife? He said, what's wrong with me? Nobody even starts a rumor about me having a second wife. <laughs> He's like, is there something wrong with me that I can't even get a second wife? Nobody's even starting a rumor? Um, but, oh, you know, we're having a party on Saturday night for my, we're saying it's for my parents for their 50th anniversary, and people said that they're going to start a registry for you, Mom. What do you want on your registry? <laughs> what do you want? No, money. Nothing. <laughs> I told them we have in our in our culture we have a when people get married they have a tacht, which is basically like a stage. A tacht means no, like no, them. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's never. You're gonna stand there. <laughs> <laughs> they have it's like a like thrones that they have. For people, and I told them that We've I was gonna, that. I was gonna have a tacht for them, and I have her wedding dress. Um, I said she's gonna wear the, she's gonna not gonna her, fit wedding, me at all. her wedding dress on, and we're gonna bring Iman, Iman there, and she can, they can renew their niqab vows. Yeah. My dad said he would kill me. <laughs> no, we had done that. He said he would absolutely. One murder time was me enough. I did that. One time was Why? more than enough. No. Well, so. Sheila, funny story, when my dad did this 50th anniversary party, which we know is like, was supposed to be a funny joke, but everyone yeah. took it very seriously, they decided to have it five days before my 50th birthday, <laughs> so <laughs> you try to do the math on that one, <laughs> okay? I mean, something is not adding up here, but whatever, it is their 50th year, Yeah, a while ago. 
a while ago still this year. Yeah. But, um, okay, we're going back to people in Afghanistan. If you have a pending case, if you have anybody that you know that you have sponsored through an I-130, a family-based petition, great, right? You can advocate for pushing that forward, okay? I-131, humanitarian parole, they're very difficult. I think that Layla, my cousin, is working very hard right now on figuring out how to get those to work and to push through. Look, I'm no expert, but what I think is throw whatever you can at the wall and see what sticks. At some point, something has to give, right? There needs to be more advocacy. I know the American Immigration Lawyers uh, um, Association is doing a great deal of advocacy right now on the Hill to uh, get some real immigration reforms in place, some real changes to the law so that we can expedite people coming into the country. Look, nobody wants to be a refugee. These people stayed in Afghanistan and they worked with the American government and they worked with the Afghan government because they thought that it was going to be safe for them and they could rebuild their country and they could have a happy and safe home. And so that is not what it looks like it's happening right now. And look, even if the Taliban do end up being not the worst ever, nobody can count on that. Right, Mom? Nobody yeah, no, can count no, on they that. They don't trust. They don't go out. They don't they go are, out. I talked to one of the family members at Kandahar. She said they haven't been out. When it's quiet, Nobody trusts it. Yeah. Nobody trusts it. And you're, you are hearing stories of people being disappeared, you know. I haven't. They, they, they tell me not, they, not, not none of their family. Right. And, and some of them also worked in offices. Yes. And, you know, they, they had jobs that could potentially have put them in danger. But we're not hearing um, anything from them. No. Um, and... Yes, you, Sheila asks, for those of us who don't live near Washington, D.C., besides money, should we call our congressmen and women? You absolutely should call them. And honestly, if any of you have friends that are vets, I'm, I'm hearing that the vets are not making any noise. They sacrificed a great deal to go to Afghanistan and to help this nation, and they re their voices really need to be heard as well because I know I have friends that were in the Army, and they're trying to get their interpreters out. Um, they've already done their part. And now they're working day and night to try to get those people out. So call everybody, you know, call. Um, there, are, there are some that are, uh, shockingly enough, really doing a lot to help. Um, Tom Cotton, for example, is, is, it makes me sick to say it, but he is a vet of that, of that nation. So he is actually trying to get people out, um, you know, I have heard that it's been very difficult to get in touch with people that you should be able to get in touch with, like Kristen Gillibrand and Chuck Schumer. Um, I, I'm not really sure of what's happening here with um, our reps in Warner and Kane here in Virginia, but I, I do know that if we had tried to contact them about various people, they would be helpful. Don Beyer is huge. Don Beyer is doing amazing, amazing work for, for people in this area. I heard somebody contacted Wexton, and she was uh, not all that helpful. So keep an eye on these people, right? I mean, there are elections coming up, and if we can put pressure on these people, like, okay, you wanted to leave Afghanistan, that's fine, but what are you going to do now? You know, if these people want to win and stay in power, they have to give us a reason to stay in power. We didn't get student debt canceled. We don't have universal health care, right? There's still not affordable housing. We still have qualified immunity for police officers. We have no criminal justice reform yet. We are sending people back to prison who came out on house arrest during COVID, even though we still have a huge COVID epidemic and people are dying. And so if we're not putting pressure on these people, this is where we're gonna be stuck as a country. That's what I think, Mom, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Yes, I agree with you. I agree. Um, I agree, Sheree. I think that the the vets are really struggling. I have spoken with several of them who were in Afghanistan recently, um, a lot of them in my DMs, who are saying, that, you know, they never had a chance to talk about Afghanistan with anybody um, outside of the military. But they really are struggling very, very much. Um, I've been getting messages from them just like, WTF, you know, what, what happened? Um, and I think a big 
a big part of it is that many, many people who were, went to Afghanistan uh, have a huge love of the country, a love of the people that they were there to help and to serve. And they also feel very betrayed because they gave these men and women that they fought alongside their word. And to them, the people that signed up to go to Afghanistan, their word means a lot. They're not politicians, right? So they believed in what they were doing. Um, and then they saw what was happening and they saw who was making money from it, right? And it wasn't them, they weren't making money, um, but they're very hurt. They're, they're very hurt right now. And I think that they need to make the phone calls as well to their, their representatives to talk to them about what's, what's going on and um, have a trade they feel as well. It's not just us, you know. They sacrificed their families here in America. They went and spent months and months and months and years there. And then just to, in, in one day, in one day, just take it all away. But tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will have a panel on Facebook Live. I'm just kind of waiting to see how these salty cookies come out. I don't know. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? You have nine minutes and oh. ten seconds. Can you guys just... Shove the kikia. You ask her a little bit late. I did, but it's supposed to be 30 minutes. Oh, okay. They smell pretty good, Mom, don't they? Oh, well, yeah. Call a veterans organization or find veterans from other wars and talk. A lot of vets will engage and understand. I think that's true. I think that, you know. Um, yeah, Srela Nidhi. Srela Nidhi? Okay. Should we turn it up? Huh? They're not red. Did I turn off the light? The, the... You turned on the light. It's okay. No, the light. No, it's fine. Oh, they're getting there on the edges. See, we're on the yeah. edges. Yeah. Okay, they're getting there. They're getting there. They're getting there. Okay. So I do think that um, that we we have this idea of who people in the military are and what they're about and why they go. And I think that we have such a huge divide left and right about pro-military, anti-military, you know, people in the military being rednecks, the people in the military being poor, whatever it is, imperialism, colonialism. But these are just people, right? They're they're young young incredibly young boys that we send over and they spend a lot of time with these people in these foreign countries. I mean, most of these kids have never been outside of America before. And then you're sending them to, you know... Afghanistan. Uh, Panjwai? Panjwai, yeah. <laughs> you know? You're not necessarily sending them to Kabul. You're sending them to yeah. Alashkarga, Panjwai. Alashkarga is a nice place. Alashkarga is a nice place. Yeah. But you're sending them to, like... Yeah, you very, know, very village. Kunar, you're sending them to, yeah, yeah. to the villages. And um, the city of the Kandahar in Kabul, people doesn't live there. Right, yeah. So, and they, they meant well. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily fair. Here's one thing I want to say. The one thing I want to say is all of you people, and I don't mean you because you guys are all great, who say that, oh, we did nothing in Afghanistan for 20 years. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. You don't know what you're talking about. You do not know what you're talking about. 20 years ago, there was nothing in Afghanistan. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. No, no, no lights, no uh, TV, no parties, no music, no school, no running water. There was nothing in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And when... The Americans came, right? They turned the lights on. So mm -hmm. initially, the initial entrance of America was not viewed by everybody as an occupying force. They had parades carrying George yeah. Bush's face. Yeah. You know? They loved Bush. Mm -hmm. We loved him. Yes. You know, he saved Afghanistan yes. from the darkness. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a very, very, very dark time. So this black and white, good versus bad... It's, a, it's not as clear cut as everyone wants to make it seem, Democrat versus Republican. When you are from a country like ours, the people that help you are the people that you love. Yes. Whoever it is, right? For example, Modi, right? Mm -hmm. He hates Muslims. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan and India are like this. 
Yeah, they are friends. Good like friends. this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the best of friends. Yep, always. Yeah, so this idea that somehow, oh, I have to hate the government of India because of anything, right? Like, no, India is helping Afghanistan. They have always helped Afghanistan. They have always been very, very close and have had very, very good diplomatic ties with Afghanistan. So, you know, I, I'm not going to say, oh, gosh, I hate Modi because of whatever he does because sorry but the other Muslim countries are not really helping my my country you know they have not really lent a hand to Afghanistan um, and they have left us high and dry in fact our closest Muslim neighbor has been our dushman yeah right they have been the devil to us so you know we are going to be thankful to those people who have helped bring us back to life and the American army the people that came after September 11th brought Afghanistan back to life you may not like that because you may be against imperialism or colonialism or whatever else but the Americans rebuilt a nation they really did and for that I think we are all very very grateful did it become something else after a while sure did it become too much because there was so much money that was being made absolutely but there was a good portion of time where the Americans did their job, they did a very good job, then of course they got distracted by the fake war in Iraq and they turned their energy away from Afghanistan, which was a war they could have won. Right, Mom? Yeah. They could have won it, but they got distracted, they went to Iraq, and the rest is history, right? Um, and I know that a lot of the time the soldiers were not allowed to fight in Afghanistan, they were not allowed to engage. In Afghanistan so they would have to run and hide so of course the Taliban got stronger and stronger and stronger um, you know but I'm thankful to those men and women who did actually go my mom's phone rings nonstop she is by far the most popular no you're right Sheila the people of this country do not realize the the amount of work that the Americans did in Afghanistan they do not realize it um, that it was there was literally nothing there. Nothing. Not, you couldn't, there wasn't a flight going in and out of the country. There wasn't an embassy. It's like it is now. Except now, the difference is, is that the world is watching because we have the internet. We didn't have this access to the internet then. Now, I Facebook people. I WhatsApp people. You know, I can get them on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a video call, right? We can see each other. We know. We know what's happening. Back then, we didn't know. We didn't know anything. So, you know, it's a different world. And if the Taliban want to govern, they're going to have to govern a completely different world. Um, and so, you know, you can only watch with captions. Why can you only watch with captions? My mom is funny or I'm funny? Um, but, you know, we... We were grateful to the Americans, and then we weren't, you know? When, when contractors are making millions and millions and millions of dollars a year, and the people in Afghanistan are suffering, that's not good. You know, that kind of inequality and corruption will always, always breed uh, discontent and ultimately chaos. Mom, yes. in Afghanistan, do people think now that the Taliban are Afghan or they're not Afghan? A majority thinks they are not Afghan, you know. They think they are from Pakistan. But are they from the Pakistan that's on the Jura line Pashtun, on the border? The, the they're Pashtun, Pashtun, right? Yeah, the Pashtun. So they're they were they are Afghan. But there there are a lot of Afghan too. Yeah. yeah, Taliban. But the Pashtuns, that's that was Afghanistan. Until they divided us up yes. because they knew what was good for them. They said we can't leave all those people together. <laughs> We can't let all of the, the... Now they are the enemy of Afghanistan. Yeah, now they're the enemy of Afghanistan. The Pashtun. They are destroying all the young people, killing. They haven't done it yet. I'm talking so fast, I'm sorry. Ask a question, slow down. We need to slow down. Mm -hmm. Let's wait. We're going to give you guys a few minutes and let you catch up and ask some questions. We could just look at each other, Mom. <laughs> Let people ask questions. Please ask questions. We're here for you to ask questions. 
Also, if you could please subscribe to the channel. We cannot do mobile lives until we hit 1,000 subscribers. We're very, very close. We need 300 more. So maybe just like make up, no, you can't do that. Don't make up other accounts, just to subscribe. But maybe get your friends to subscribe. Um, you know, subscribe with your all your other Google accounts. I don't know. But we need, uh, we need more. I didn't know we had captions. Yeah, Facebook does it automatically on the chat, on the, on the Facebook. So are we just going to stay here in silence while they catch up? My mom was, mom, you were 22 when you came to America? Yeah. Alexa, stop. Yeah, so she spent more time in America than in Afghanistan, but you cannot get Afghanistan out of your blood. What do they say? You can take the girl out of Afghanistan, but you can't take the Afghanistan out of the girl. You don't know what you were going to ask? No, come on. Think of it. I don't know what, how old my dad was. 15. <laughs> we don't ask him his age. I'm just joining belatedly, but I'd love to hear your take on the we've changed message the Taliban is putting out to the world. Wa alaykum ni salam khuri. Mom, what do you think about the Taliban's message? What do you say? That they've changed. You know how the Taliban are saying we're not the same Taliban anymore? They said they are, they are, the people are saying it, you know, they don't trust him, them. They are, he, they are just making some kind of, to get in and settle down. I don't know. Inform the government. I don't know if you heard my mom, if you could hear her, but she said that people are saying that they're just saying these nice words now just so that they could get in and then form their own government. Um, because there is nothing, no government, not... No. Right, because right now there is no government. There is literally no government in Afghanistan. The Taliban took over, but there's no... There's nothing there. They didn't take over anything. Um, they, didn't, they don't have any ministries, they don't have a president, they don't have any capacity to govern right now. Um, here's okay, your cookies is ready. my cookies. Your mom hates Taliban. Shukur. We hate <laughs> Taliban too. Um, my cookies are ready. Are they ready? Ooh, they look ready, mom. Yeah. No, let's take them out. They look fantastic. They look just like in the Maki Kuche. Too bad they don't have any sugar on them. Did you put sugar in the tea, Mom? Uh, a little bit. You gotta put a lot. Oh, these cookies look fantastic. I'm gonna put them on a plate and then we're gonna show you. Okay. What kind of plate should we put them on? A brown one? I know I had a spatula. Here we go. Mom, I like yeah. to put this jagger, this um, this sugar in it. In, in oh, powder sugar? sugar? No, this one. This one. This one. Oh, it's brown. Guara. Guara. <laughs> you don't like this in it? This is what I put in it. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You put a nice big chunk of it. Oh, uh, the tea? Yeah. Mm. This much? That's too much. <laughs> Mom and I are going to argue about, about sugar right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what, uh, Amal, I don't know. That's what I've heard. I've heard that he went to Panjshir and um, uh, he's trying to gather people. I think that if they uh, try to mess with the flag, we're gonna have an issue. I think if Taliban were smart, they would just have established themselves as like the behind the scenes government, you know, like that movie Roxanne, right? Cyrano de Bergerac, just kind of like telling whoever was in front what to say and do, and just staying behind the scenes and they would be able to control everything. Taking away our flag is going to be their biggest issue because we are so committed 
My brother has a flag tattooed on his arm. I don't know if my mom knows that. But that's how committed to the flag we are. I have it hanging outside of my house right now. Um, because that's, it's a very meaningful symbol to us. So, um, we have heard that Ahmad, uh, Ahmad Shah Masood's son is, is getting ready to fight, but we watched on the news as a female reporter was interviewing someone from the Taliban and it was supposed to prove that they've changed. Yeah, I think that they're right now the cameras are on them, so they're, they're being very good. But remember, this is the very big difference, right? There are cameras on them. And as long as the world keeps watching, they may either get tired and start re doing something else and start retreating to their old ways, in which case then the, you, you know, NATO has to react and, and the, the nations need to react, or they won't. Um, no, we are not going to lose hope. We will never lose hope. We are Afghans. We don't lose hope. We're not losing hope. Not even, not even a little bit. We will, we will take Afghanistan back. I mean, this, the, the, the reality of all these people talking about colonialism and imperialism is this. This current government, whatever you want to call it, has been imposed on the Afghans, right? This is not the, the, the choice of the Afghans. And anybody who says this is what Afghans chose is lying because the Afghans were not a part of the talks in Doha. They were not a part of the talks with Donald Trump at Camp David. They have not been a part of any of this. Nobody has asked them. Nobody has asked them, what do you want? Did they want Ashraf Ghani? Probably not, right? But who did they want? What did they want? What kind of government did they want? Right? Nobody asked them. So this is a colonial imposition. This is an American imposition. Just like if you say Ashraf Ghani was a puppet, or if you say Hamid Karzai was a puppet, they are puppets as well. We did not choose them, which is very important to note. Okay? So this idea that, well, they, you know, the Afghans must have wanted it because they didn't fight. Number one, you stopped paying them, you didn't feed them, and you sold them down the river. So, me and my spatula are serious about that. We are very serious <laughs> about that. Let's go back over here to the cookie section. How's it looking over there, Mama? Um, I want to boil it a little bit okay. more. So, is this high? You want to put your glasses on? Yes. Is it because <laughs> I don't know you were machi were my machine. My machine. My stove is very fancy. Okay. Look at this. Look at these cookies. Can you see these cookies? Can you see these? Don't these look good? They're brown. They're delicious. I mean, they look good. I'm going to try to like them today. What do you say about Ashraf Ghania? Look, there are, there are two schools of thought, right? Either he was fantastic or he was a corrupt criminal. What we know, they do look good, right? I mean, if you gave these to someone and said, here, have a cookie, they would not know that there's no sugar in them. Um, and they smell so good, because they smell so buttery. It's just such a nice. Um, I'm going to get to your question about has there ever been an actual vote for leadership government in Afghanistan. Yes, there has. Um, and so do I, the story, of course, is, is that he left in a helicopter with suitcases, like actual suitcases full of money. And there were so many, he couldn't take them all on the plane. I think I heard $126 million in cash. So if this is true, this is a problem, right? Um, how do you just leave like that? And here's the other thing. If this wasn't planned, how did the Taliban let him leave? You know, how did they let him leave? So, what do I think? I don't know what to think, right? I don't know that any of us knows $167 million he left with. I don't know that anybody knows what to think. I know he did some sort of interview the other day, and he said, like, oh, we'll be back, and Afghanistan will rise again. Whatever. Okay, dude, whatever. Um, and then I heard that he went to Tajikistan, and Tajikistan wouldn't let him land the plane. They wouldn't let him out, so he went to Oman. So I don't know, even know if anybody knows where he is right now. Sheree, yes, there have been elections in Afghanistan. 
Um, I always talk about this because election day in Afghanistan is a holiday. And the last round of elections, even though not very many people voted, because it's always very dangerous to vote, um, they actually, the lines were so long and they had so many technical issues that not everyone could vote. So they made the day after it also a holiday. So I always wonder how in America the election day can't be a holiday, but in Afghanistan it can be a holiday. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, we, um, we do have ID for voting. You have to give your, your, your fingerprint when you vote. You will have seen very early on that they were, the Taliban were looking for people who had voted and they were looking for the purple ink on their fingers and then, you know, cutting off their fingers. Right, Mom? That was the story? No, I don't know. Mom says he doesn't know. Maybe he protected the money from Taliban. I mean, maybe. I don't know that that's true because why was the cash in his house? How did he have access to the cash? I mean, sure, if he's going to give it back to, uh, to the people, I, I have no idea. I, I don't know what to think about Ashraf Ghani. He is not really my, my issue, right? We have to worry about the people who are there right now. I heard he is in the UAE. That's what I heard too. I heard he tried to go to Tajikistan and they said, no, you cannot stay here. New York Times confirmed UAE. He, yeah, he went to Oman. You know, last go around, um, Oma, uh, the UAE was one of the only countries that recognized the Taliban as the legitimate government of Afghanistan. Now, America is saying, we don't know that we're going to recognize the Taliban, who we gave this country to, as the legitimate government of, uh, of Afghanistan. They've cut off funds to Afghanistan. How do you give the country to a group that you consider terrorists and then cut off all means of supply to that country. I hope he says he's coming back. We'll see what happens. I mean, I like I said, I don't have. Amal says he said I'm coming back. Um, why is he coming back? I don't know. I, all of these things are rumors, right? All of these things are rumors because a lot of people are asking, how do you get 167 million dollars? onto a helicopter. I mean, your helicopter would crash. So I, I don't really know how that would happen. I'm waiting for Mama's tea over here. It's ready. Oh, okay, we're waiting for, for, for a mix. Okay, let's pour this. Anybody else want some? <clears throat> <laughs> I think I that one some. Yeah, we should get... Everybody wants some. Okay. Sure. Everybody wants some mix. Okay, let's get it to you. And there's also cookies. I mean, you know, we use cookies loosely in quotes. Mom, you gotta go stand in front of the TV, in oh. front of the computer. You have to entertain <laughs> them. Entertain them. You know, sometimes I worry that people are gonna say, uh, Taliban are gonna say, uh, the halal lord you perceiving for YouTube came as much care how we cover it. That's true. You know. Yeah. So we should be more careful too. Yeah. No, Taliban, we love you. We're just kidding. It's all a joke. <laughs> <laughs> bring peace and yeah, like bring everybody peace. to have their own life regular, like the time of uh, Zahir Shah, the Sardar Dawood. And also Karzai. So bring back the peace. And let the women do their job. You have more work to do than talking about women. Leave women yeah, alone. Yeah, leave women alone. Kids al children, girls alone. I will not be able to sleep the whole night. Who needs sleep, to sleep, Mama? Sleeping bags, uh, sleeping pills. <laughs> we call this, I tell them all the time, we call this Afghan Red Bull. Mm. Is there an Afghan toast? What is the Afghan toast? Bismillah. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Bismillah. <laughs> like frost or, you know, like if we make a toast. Oh, no. We're not allowed to make toasts, are we? I never heard that before. No. 
I doubt it. Is it Bismillah? Okay, yeah, Bismillah. Yeah, yeah always say right. Bismillah yeah. Rahman Rahim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Give it a taste. Here goes nothing. I'm scared. Very tasty. Here's your tea. I mean, it's actually pretty good if I don't think of it as a cookie. If I think of it as a biscuit, if in your brain you say biscuit, no, it's, it's actually very good. Very good. N not compared to the Namakyu cookies I buy in the store. It's Namakyu kulche. Namakyu. Which I don't love, but I figured I would try it and make it. No, it's good. And it's actually really good. Huh? It's actually good. It's buttery. Mm -hmm. Very buttery. Mm -hmm. And it's good with it. I'm glad I did this, Mom. Mm -hmm. Are you glad? I'm glad you put the, the gore inside. Oh, inside the tea? <laughs> yeah. It's nice, right? Yeah, I never had it before. You never did? Mm -mm. Brown sugar. So yeah, I, I use jaggery. Sugar. I had I had the the cubes. You guys saw it the other night. If you watched, I made um, I make it with jaggery, which is a, uh, it's Indian, right? It's a hardened brown sugar. It's like a big sugar cube, and I love how it brings out all of the taste. Mm -hmm. We had it in back home. I don't yeah. know from where it was coming. Guada, right? Gorda. 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 But it's really nice with, here you go. You're looking at it like you need to have some. It actually is really good. Yes, it is worth packing because they're really easy to eat. Um, Cherie, it's, it's very easy to eat because you don't have to spend a lot of time chewing it. It's melt in your it mouth. melts in your mouth. So if you make it with um, a gluten-free flour... I think maybe um, bidinj, like rice or corn, not necessarily almonds, because almond is a little bit denser. You need nothing. Just it, it, it would really because it's um, it's just pure like flour and salt, like that, and with some water, like it'll help you stay hydrated and give you some quick energy, and you don't have to chew it. We live in the great state of Virginia. I never thought that I would ever say that I'm happy to live in the South. But we live in Northern Virginia. And I've lived in New York. And I can tell you that Virginia is a thousand times better than New York. Maybe a million times better. The only thing we don't have are the mountains and the and the fresh lakes. Oh, then my kids are coming for for it too. Um, but otherwise, our politics are better. Our taxes are better. We have great schools here, and population is more diverse. Population is super diverse. Thank you, Sheila. Um, and we have a huge Afghan population. Huge, mashallah. There are so many of us. You cannot go to a store, right, mom, and talk about people in Pashto. Because someone's going to understand what you're saying. That's just how it is around here. Have I ever been to Afghanistan? Not since I was small. Every year I say I'm going to go and everyone's going to be like, wait, go next year, it'll be safer. Go next year, it'll be safer. Go next year, it'll be safer. So now I was like, okay, you guys say it's so quiet now that Taliban are there. Maybe I go now. So then my cousin said, no, go next year during grape season. So we'll wait, right, for Angur. We'll wait for grapes. And then we'll go. We love you, Taliban. Don't mess with us, okay? What does it taste like? It does, it tastes like a biscuit that melts in your mouth, okay? Mm -hmm. So, if you talk about a southern style biscuit, that when you eat it, it is like cotton candy in how it dissolves, and all you're left with, for anar, yeah. 
I mean, a nod is like the greatest thing ever. Pomegranate. So that's like. How is it? Um. It's very good. I highly, highly recommend you make this. And I really, I have to tell you honestly, I'm surprised I'm even saying that, right? Because I don't like this stuff, normally. I made these as a joke, actually. I was like, let me just make this thing that I hate. Well, the first time you did it. No, not, I don't know about a communion wafer. No, no, no. No, no. 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 it's Catholic. Communion wafers are like styrofoam. Communion wafers are like styrofoam. These are not this like styrofoam. Like a, this is like, a, like you said, a southern He also went to a Polish school. church, so I don't know if he knows what he's talking about. Maybe you're... So, are you kidding me? Roman Catholics. <laughs> Roman Catholics. Um, uh, it is like a southern biscuit. It's not flaky. It's not flaky, but it is buttery. Right. It's not salty. But it's not sweet. It's just a buttery, crumbly. cookie, crumbly, melts in your mouth. Really great with some very sweet either tea or maybe a coffee. They melt. They do. They melt in your mouth. So I don't know if you've ever had, um, when you make cookies sometimes, uh, even like chocolate chip cookies or some other cookies, you can add uh, cornstarch to them, right? So the cornstarch makes them super melty in your mouth and it gives them like a light, a super light texture. This is made with whole flour and yet it is just as light as something that's made with corn flour. Which is why I said, Cherie, you can, yes, like a shortbread. Exactly like a shortbread. That's exactly correct. It tastes like a shortbread. Yep. That's right. That's what I wanted to say. So that's why I think they'd be great for a long run to pack up. Please make ugra. Oh my gosh, I love ugra so much. I should because ugra is a food that we make as a sacrifice, right? We make it as a khairat. So ugra would be a great one to make very soon. People keep asking for things like biryani, um, a kabali palau, mantu, all of these super sort of like great complicated recipes. And then when I get to it, I'm like, I don't have any of the ingredients. So um, I always have things on hand for baking because I bake a lot. But um, just make it, make it, it um, it's super fast to make. These, these cookies, they, um, you saw me, I was talking to you guys. You probably could make it in five minutes. And then you stick it in the oven. I think they were in there for 25 minutes at 350. Um, and you can make two dozen at once. And they're very, very, very good. And they're already gone. And they're already, they're already gone. I mean, my freaking kids ate them. So, but I love ugra. Oh, that's my voice. Any other questions? I've been on for a long time. You guys, please subscribe to the channel, please. Please get your friends to subscribe. I'm just gonna sit here and eat another cookie while I wait for you. This is my dinner. My kids are gonna be like, why do we always have to eat snacks for dinner? Any other questions? I've been on here for an hour and 30 minutes. You guys are awesome. Lives are my favorite because I usually don't give my producer enough time when I say I'm going to do a live. So they're much easier for me to do because I don't have to like do all this stuff. But they get in there. They get crazed because they're like, what? Why did you say you're going to do a live? We ain't got time for that. I'm like, no, I'm doing it because I want to talk about Afghanistan. I'm so glad you tuned in too. And I will continue to make things. Oh, I made these other cookies one time that were vegan. Tahini cookies. They were so good. Okay, do I still have that recipe? Probably somewhere. Yeah, they were tahini cookies. They were vegan. I used tahini instead of um, um, eggs as the binder. Top notch. Not that you're vegan. But they were tahini and almond flour. So, vegan and gluten free. Is that all? Are we done? You're just gonna stare at each other? I'm gonna stare at people until they. 
Oh, you guys can't see the comments. No. It's not. It's just the way that Restream works. I can see all your comments. So Leslie said, I wish I could see all the comments. Probably the middle of nowhere internet service. Yeah, it's streaming just fine. Can we see now? Time to chat something. All right, now somebody chat something. Somebody type something. There you go. <clears throat> do I ever make rice pudding? I do. Should bringe. Do you like rice pudding? So I'll definitely make rice pudding. Love rice pudding. Feeding it? Not the biggest fan. It's always so kind of congealed. Not my favorite, but should bringe. Love it. Have there been local protests in your area to support Afghans? Um, I think they, they had it last Saturday. Yeah, last Saturday, and there's one on the 28th. On the 28th. So if you, um, and I know that they've had several several across the country. I saw that there was one in. Your mama's going home. Say bye. Okay. Come say bye to your audience. Taking a couple cookies for your father. Okay. You're, my, okay. My dad doesn't like those cookies either, though. He would huh? like this one. Okay, it's good. different. Okay. Okay. Uh, how I say the Khulai for Aman in Bay. Have a wonderful night. Allah Hafiz. Okay. Bye, Mama. Love you. Take Love care. Love you too. Thank you. If you want, I can make. Um, I saw my babies in You saw how your babies, my her grandchildren, my kids. Um, and there's one on the 28th, and I, I know that there was a huge one in Houston. There have been a few in Canada in California, in places where there are large Afghan populations and just allies. Um, so here, here's another cookie. Have one on. No? I had two. I guess, wait, is this my dinner? Yeah, that's it. That's what okay. you're having for dinner. That's cool. We should have opened that up before. I'm sorry, we didn't open up the chat. We did that before. for the future. We didn't know if people would like it. If they like seeing each other, that's good. Well, what do you mean you didn't know if people would like it? Of course people want to see each other's chats. Otherwise, I'm just talking, and they have no idea who I'm talking to. No, seriously, they're great. They, they put the show together. Oh, Live with Eggplant? What? What? It says Live with Eggplant. What? Afghan Cooks, Live with Eggplant. Where? It says it right there. You know why, don't you? Because we were supposed to make Eggplant. That's what you told me, and the producer puts in the title. That's right. What you said we're gonna make, and you can't change it afterwards. Oh, sorry. We we're gonna make we eggplant, we, but we can't time travel okay. or do numerous other things. Even though you do have a very good producer. <laughs> so we were gonna make eggplant, but then when I told my mom when she got here, I was like, "Mom, we're gonna make eggplant." She's like, "Did you salt it?" So then I was like, "No." She's like, "How are we gonna make eggplant if it's so bitter?" So I was like, "Fine, we're making salty cookies." Um. There are, there are a lot of Afghans in New York, too, in New York City in particular. There are, there are even some now um, in upstate New York. So we have property in Troy, New York, and the, um, there are Afghans there now, too. In fact, there's a great restaurant in Troy, New York called Tara Kitchen. It's Moroccan. Whoa. And uh, one of the men that, that works there is Afghan. Really super nice guy. Um, there's also a Syrian guy there. They built this huge new mosque there. So, you know, if uh, the West thinks they can just like snuff out Islam and uh, Afghans, then they're wrong. We just come and multiply. Yeah, but there's there are a lot of there are a lot of Afghans here, and it's really nice. Mostly my fam like for me, it's my family. I know that there are other Afghans who live here too that are not my family. But I mostly just hang out with my family, my cousins, and my aunts, and my uncles, and my nieces, and nephews, and I mean, we've got, we've got enough to keep us busy. So, and cookies are better than eggplant. Uh, I don't know, Leslie, our eggplant is pretty freaking fantastic, honestly, like, it's fried, um... It's just so good. I, although these cookies are really good too. And so we have this uh, joke that we tell uh, about cookies. And, well, we. 
my cousin Samir actually said, if you want to kill someone, give them an Afghan cookie and no water. They'll choke to death. Because usually, like I said, our cookies are not very buttery or soft. They're really super dry. So it's like... That's an Afghan cookie. These are good though. Anything else? Should we wrap, should we wrap it up? Should we wrap it up? Tomorrow at two, don't forget. Tomorrow at two. Um, are you, you th I think about my father frying eggplant. Traumatizing. Uh, the frying of the eggplant is, I mean, it's the, it's the hardest part, right? I mean, it's very time consuming um, and it is, it is traumatizing. The only way to cook eggplant is the Afghan way. Alex, you are so correct about that. You know, the Afghans have a way with the vegetables. So when I was growing up, and I've told this story before, um, I uh, loved spinach, even when I was a little kid. Loved spinach, loved okra, like loved it, loved it, loved it. And I used to talk about how much I loved spinach, for example. And my friend, uh, Chrissy Van Slovis, I don't know if she ever watches this show, um, her mom, may she rest in, in peace and find uh, peace in the afterlife. Uh, I went to her house for dinner one time and she made me uh, spinach. Because Chrissy was like, how do you eat that? You eat spinach, you get gross. Let me tell you, I understood why Americans didn't eat spinach. Like it was just like this glop on the plate. I was like, I have to eat this now because I really like them. She's my friend, and she made it for me. It was not good. Um, but, like, my kids eat spinach. They love eggplant. They love okra. Um, but, yeah, Afghan eggplant. I'm going to have mom cook it because hers is divine. Uh, so we'll have her on to cook eggplant. But I'm going to give you my aunt's Venmo again. Oh, what? Wait. You won't eat egg... Eggplant? You are, oh, see, your problem is you have not had Afghan eggplant, have you? That is my aunt's uh, Venmo. If you are interested in donating, please do. We will make sure they're Zussi. We will make sure that it gets to women on the ground in Afghanistan. Um, any amount would be great, five dollars, a dollar, a thousand dollars, or whatever you want to give. Afghan, Afghan eggplant is not. Neil! Um, so I have an eggplant dish already on the channel. It's, uh, I'll post a link. Yeah, so he'll, so we'll post a link to that. It's um, called Lagatak Banjar. It's like a, it's almost like a, what is that eggplant dip called? Baba ganoush. Baba ganoush. Um, so we have that. We have uh, borane oh, kajo, which is uh, pumpkin squash, butternut squash, that is cooked in a similar style to the way we will eventually show you how to cook eggplant. We have that. We have a, a bunch of vegetarian dishes that are already on the channel. I wouldn't eat spinach or eggplant or okra until I met my husband. Yeah, I know, right? Like, our bandy is like amazing. <laughs> um, and it's one of my favorite, it has always been my favorite dish uh, to eat. And that's what I say about Afghan food. It's like, people are always like, oh, I can't eat Afghan food because there's so much meat. Like our meat is our meat, right? We have meat, but we're not a very wealthy country, so well, or wealthy people. Um, so you have meat, but then you have like 20 dishes around it that are not meat, unless you're having a party, in which case you will have, you know, many kinds of meat. But we usually always have a salad. Barnjarn is like the greatest food on earth. There's nothing better than barnjarn, honestly. It's the greatest food on earth. It's, that's eggplant. Um, but we always have salad. We always have yogurt and uh, 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 chickney, 
Uh, we have a, a link to that as well. I have a link. We have our, our yogurt recipe on this on, on YouTube as well. All of these recipes are also on the afghancooks.com website. You can get everything through there. If you go to afghancooks.com, you can also watch the old videos as well and get up to speed. Um, I like how I'm restreaming the producer is Afghan Cox. Um, ah! Are you Tahira, my Tahira? Is that who you are? Because I'm so excited if it is. Um, but what was I saying? I got so flustered by that. Oh my gosh, are you at school? Are you at school? My little niece, my cousin's child, uh, is going to UVA. Oh my gosh. Um, so um, we cried a little, but she's there now. So her little sister is uh, at UVA. And um, I'm really proud of her and really excited. But I told her, I said, don't bring shadam on our family. <laughs> Which is what they say to women. They're like, don't bring shame on our name. Um, but she's going to UVA and we're all her, Tahira's younger sister, uh, the baby of the family. And we're really, really excited. Um, Tahira's birthday, by the way, is the same day as my parents 50th anniversary party. So <laughs> that's that's cute, right? But yeah, she's uh she's at UVA and we're all super we're super excited to have her there and super proud of her. Um for getting in. It's a great school and she's there. Now we just have to hope and pray that all the women of Afghanistan I know Sadiq celebration. It's so great. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. I was thinking of getting a DJ. What do you think? Oh, DJ, pump this party. What do you think? I mean, we are in the middle of a of national morning. We should definitely have a DJ. That's the thing I wanted to tell you about Afghans, right? It doesn't matter what's happening. There could be bombs dropping. There could be a full-on war. Afghans 100% will keep the party going regardless of anything that is going on around them. And that's what the Taliban also tried to take away from us was our complete and utter disregard for anything that's going on that's going to interfere with our what is it our our vibe? We were just we're just trying to vibe. We're just vibing. Right? My kids are going to cringe so hard. They're going to be like, "Oh my god, mom, why are you saying those words?" Dude, I've been on with you guys for almost 2 hours now. Isn't it time to go? Tahira John, we made Namaki Kulche. Tell your mama. I like to talk to Tahira and her sisters. Um, their parents are both my first cousins, so you guys figure that one out. Um, and I like to tell them stories about what their dad was like when I was growing up with him. We grew up kind of like, we grew up like brother and sister. Um, so every once in a while I'd be like, hey, you know what your dad did? <laughs> um, and those girls are really fun. You just had Namiki Kulche? Really? Wow, I imagine that. Um, but yeah, I like to, I like to tell my, my little nieces and nephews about their, Oh yes, your father did come to my law school graduation. He's always been a big he's always been a big cheerleader of mine. He's always been incredibly supportive and I've been so lucky to have him in my life. And your mom too. Your mom too. I mean, your mom and I are a lot alike. <laughs> we'll definitely show pics this weekend. Guys, it's been almost two hours. Is it time to go? Is it time to go? I think it's time to go. Right? Thank you so much for being here. Remember, tomorrow at 2, we will be having a live panel discussion 
Um, we will have people from um, the Refugee Assistance Program, as well as three Afghan American uh, immigration attorneys who will be talking at length about the immigration options for people in Afghanistan, as well as for some of those who may not have documents who are here in America as well. And I will be moderating uh, and introducing people uh, tomorrow. And uh, please come with questions if you have them. I'm so thankful to Shakur Bikhidir Sasurat Langatsaka, Bikhikwashala Swalamich Tasir Delewas Rasara. Thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate it. Please make dua, pray for Afghanistan in. Doesn't matter what faith you are, if you're if you don't believe in anything, but you just believe in good vibes, put it all out there for my people that they can live in peace and um, have a life, have a good life, like we are all entitled to have. Okay, thank you so much, Leslie. I'm so excited to have you're having your own family reunion. But try if not, you'll be able to watch it on YouTube later on. Um, It'll be there for you to watch in case people have any questions about how to get out of Afghanistan. How do they like that fast talking in Virginia? <laughs> I, I think my family is used to my fast talking. I'm going to slow down for my lives though. I didn't realize that, um, <laughs> you know it though. You know it. You know about my fast talking. Um, I didn't realize there were captions. On Facebook? Yeah. On Facebook. That's why I was talking so fast. Persico. My mama asked me if you were on. She asked about you. She said, is Nancy, is Nancy watching? <laughs> you have a headache from reading since you were in elementary school. Thank you, Shri. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody. Inshallah. Good night. I hope you have a wonderful night, and we'll see you again soon, God willing. Bye.